Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron. I'm a retired New York City police detective with 20 plus years of law enforcement. And tonight we are gonna bring to you some very important information. We're gonna be talking about the wildlife at the Carlton Reserve and what is still running around in and about that location uh, pertaining to Brian Laundry and his remains. A lot of people are going back and forth and looking at uh, the, trying to go to the site to look at different things, kick some cans around. Uh, matter of fact, another TikToker found some items. But guys, if you're not yet subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you will get all things Duty Ron when I go live or upload another video. Also joining us from a remote location. I don't know if he wants to put it out there, but he's outside of New York State again. Ed Wallace, my co-host. Here he is. Ed, I don't know. Do you want to tell the folks where you are? You're a sneaky and uh, mysterious guy. So do uh, you want to let our folks know where you are? I'm in Minneapolis. All right. He gave it right up like a wet noodle. Uh, Ed, so you and I have been speaking about the um, the, the wildlife in the Carlton Reserve and uh, Maya uh, you know, Nature Reserve. It's They're both together in that in that closed enclosed area there's so many different dangers when the water recedes um we're seeing a lot of folks go out there just to kind of not gawk but just to go uh even our retired detective sergeant bill cannon uh he was out there in the in the reserve and he was running around today which was hey listen he's probably packing he's probably got his he's probably got his piece on him right ed so um Bill is a whole different uh, situation, um, but we 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 were concerned about anybody getting hurt, and that's the thing is like I don't want people to get a false sense of um, this is a this is a great place to go and pack a picnic basket and go out there. Everything is going to be nice and safe. So um, let me just say hello to all the channel members, the Patreon supporters, and all the folks who positively interact in all of our live streams. Um, Hey, that video that we were waiting to download, Ed, has downloaded, and it's really a high-quality one. So I'm going right. to back it up and play that. Uh, Paul from the Gator, Gator Boys from last week, it was just about a week or two ago, we had Paul on. He has been kind enough to grace us again this evening uh, with his presence. I mean, he is, again, uh, an expert in um, wildlife, uh, especially we know, as we know, the alligators. Um, let me just try to set this thing up. Um, Ed, you want to talk about uh, what you're doing in Minneapolis, or is you want to keep that on the down low? Well, my youngest son uh, works out here, and uh, he came out here right after graduating college, just before COVID hit, and then his office shut down. And so for uh, since his office shut down in uh, March of, uh, was it uh, 2020, he's been working out of his uh, apartment and He's he's had it. He's burnt out. Um, so he he's coming back to New York to work and giving up Minneapolis. So I came out here with the the misses to pack them up and bring them home. How's everybody doing tonight? So our show, you know, we want to talk about the dangers of being out in these reserves. In addition, we uh, you know we want. To, we just don't understand the, the psychological aspects of why people would uh, travel from the West Coast to come out to the East Coast or to the from the East Coast to the West Coast to go look at these crime scenes and, and start searching uh, for things on their own. And I could tell you, I could answer that a little bit. It's because the curiosity, people are curious and they want to see it. All right. I'm going to show this clip without further ado. It's a very short one. This is some of Paul's, uh, this, Paul shared this with me. Actually, you know what? Let's bring him on so he can. Yeah, bring him on. Everything. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I, I can't have a, a, we can't have a prominent man like that sitting in the uh, green room. So without further ado, um, Paul from the Gator Boys, he is here with us. Thank you for joining. My brother, I appreciate you taking out the time on a Monday night. Uh, no worries. You were a fan favorite. You, uh, mm -hmm. I've answered the most emails that I've ever answered in a in the two and a half years that I've been doing Crime Time with Duty Ron, thanks to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody loves you, man. What are Good we looking at? What are we looking at on the screen, brother? Uh, it's just this is just a catch I recently did out here in Plantation. It's a like an eight and a half foot alligator big thick one that i uh 
we had to go down and find it. It was, uh, it was stalking ducks along the bank. It ate it, quite a few of them, obviously, if you see how thick this guy is. is but this is just one of the, te one there, of the techniques I use to catch these guys. Gotcha. Is there any volume on this or no? Uh, there might be some audio. It's going to be a bunch of splashing around. but Okay. All right. I'm going to play it. So this is one of Paul's recent recent catches, one of uh, and as you for the audience, uh, he goes out and picks up the nuisance alligators. He saves them from being shot by the police, or how how, how do they kill them? Do they shoot them, or how is that? Uh, done? Yeah, the the way the trappers are paid essentially is with the meat and the hide of the alligator. So I always say I'm the only one dumb enough to go trapping for free, but mm -hmm. um, most of them use a bank stick or. Yeah, a quick uh, shot to the head. Well, many of us would argue that you're not dumb. You're you've got a heart, and you're um, you're you're giving these guys a, a place to live out the rest of their lives in in captivity and in safety. They're not going to be hurting anybody where they are. So, uh, and they're going to get their bellies uh, fed quite a bit. Uh, let's play this so everybody can see. He's underwater here with uh, looks like um, some type of noose device. To catch. Yeah, it's a catch pole, just a PVC right. pole with a rope in it. And I asked him last time, does he have a spear gun or anything? And he says, no, uh, we don't want to get bit. And then we revert to plan A when plan B comes up, when something like that, he said. It was pretty funny. Um, so here he is. Why yeah. does the water look red? It's just tannic acid. Okay, gotcha. Just that swampy water that mulls around all over Florida. There it is. He doesn't know. He has no idea. Not yet. He's just kind of chilling down there. He knows right about now. Oh. <laughs> All the silt comes off of him or soot or whatever that is, and it goes Yeah, crazy. silt. Yeah, now you can't even see him, basically. Although, yeah, that's the that's a tough part when you do something like this. A lot of times you'll get stuck up against the ledge or something. And it's like you're in the fight, you're in a fight with the baddest guy in the in the bar and somebody turned the lights off. Right. Now is this hurting him in any way? No, he's just he's trying to get that that rope off off him. He's just gonna bite anything that comes near his mouth. Right. Um, the other trappers use I want to go back yeah. and you see this, how peaceful this was until this point. The other trappers use baited hooks a lot, which they swallow. It ends up killing the alligator because he spends the whole night tearing his stomach inside out. But uh. this is uh, about as uh, gentle as you can get with these guys and still be able to catch them. Yeah, it was uh, like a big treble hook. Yeah, well, I'll use a treble hook on a cast line. Those guys use like a baited shark hook, a lot of these guys. Oh. Yeah, too big. They do the they do the they do the the treble hook as well, but when that doesn't work, people love to hang out those baited shark hooks, and I just don't have the heart to do it. Yeah, like hanging a little chicken from a tree. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. How big is this guy, Paul? Eight feet six inches and uh, about two hundred pounds. All right, now we're up on. Now we're up out of the water. Wow, that's really that's a clear picture right there. I don't know how that's coming across to the uh, audience, but. Oh yeah. So w where exactly is this, Paul? Uh, plantation, Florida. Actually, Coast. it was the police. It was the police that called me. That's uh, e East Coast, right? By ninety-five. Yeah, it's it's like East Coast West. We're on like basically the East Coast of the Everglades. Right, right, right. Wow! Look at the teeth on that sucker. He's actually got nice shiny teeth. You don't need to use peroxide on this bad boy. Oh, yeah, you're not brushing no. his teeth. Not yet. <laughs> 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 he says not yet wow look at that that's unbelievable let me get it back to that spot so we can see the teeth yeah wow. you can run that pvc pole over with a truck it won't it won't touch it those guys put holes in them left and right like nothing that is unbelievable man wow um how many of these things you go out on in a given week on average paul it, it depends. Uh, like, we just started getting cold weather down here, cold, relatively yeah. speaking, in the 60s and 70s. But uh, this is when they're going to start popping up and laying up on the grass and people's backyards. And they might have been there for two years, but they're just right. starting to see them now. So I may get five permits in one day, and I may not get one for two weeks. Yeah, because but about a hundred, about, I probably get about 300 a year, and I probably catch about 50 to 100 a year. Last week when I, I tried to get together with you, uh, I think it was Friday night or one of the nights, and you said you were going out uh, to catch a python. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm also one of the python contractors down here, and uh, 
we were going out looking for the invasive pythons, trying to remove some of those guys from the Everglades because they're really doing some serious damage. There's like a 90, I think it's a 94% reduction in the mammal rates wow. of the, uh, in the national park down here. So when I get spare time from away from the gator stuff, I try to go out and uh, remove some of these invasive pythons. Uh, Jackie, Jackie Sintel from the audience she says, how does the, the gator like his new home? <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't talk much. Yeah, there, there's no, there, there's not an open line of communication uh, with. I'm Paul. assuming he's fine with it, though. It looked like he enjoyed food quite a bit. So, <laughs> um, so one of the primary reasons I brought you on here is exactly what we were talking about. So now, um, for my listening audience, the couple that I'm going to show, uh, Ali and Dan, they're great people. I have, I'm not going to use them as an example to say, hey, don't do what they did. But what I'm going to say is that, um, you know, when regular folks go out and I'm, a I'm asking Paul to back me up on this and correct me if I'm wrong. If you're regular people who are just adventure seekers and you don't really know the wild well or a nature reserve like a nature reserve like the Calton Reserve, uh, there's all kinds of wild animals roaming in there and reptiles and all different kinds of stuff. Uh, but I'm not singling these folks out for any bad reasons. I'm just using it as 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 a as an example of what you guys can you know you could see what they did, uh, and then many others went in there just because you know as human beings we we're curious. Like you want to, if there was a crime scene down in the in the middle of my town, I would drive by there and just say, oh, you know, let's see. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a shooting at one of the stop and shops uh, about a year ago. And I went, I went and drove by there. You know, I, I was curious. It's just, a, you know, but when you're talking about a nature preserve like this, where there is no lifeguard to save you if you fall into a pool or if you fall into water, uh, it's a dangerous proposition. Uh, Paul, do you want to talk a little bit about what some of the things you can meet in a, you know, this could be anywhere, but Florida has so many of these uh, nature reserves. Yeah, I mean, the biggest danger out there is just the mud like people think oh the water's gone it's fine now there's mud that you'll sink up to your neck in and you can right. have boots on you i've had it before i've had snake boots on that go up to my knee and uh i've had the boots go under where you're stuck and you're if you were barefoot you'd probably be okay but if you're barefoot and you get bit by a water moccasin you're not gonna be okay so um yeah it's the elements as much as it's the environment rather as much as uh the animals out there but again there's Rattlesnakes, water moccasins. Again, a female bear guarding her cubs. Not a good, not a good deal. I've had gators that are completely covered in mud. You think you're gonna walk across some little trail that's uh, you know, only, you know, maybe a foot deep in mud, and there might be a gator laying right right down there, you'll step on them, and that's not gonna end well for you. Wow. I'm gonna show just a little clip of the the this is a couple who drove across uh the country. You know, they are van life people. And, um, you know, I'm sure that they came across the Gabby Petito um, situation from, you know, seeing it on YouTube. So I'm going to go full screen and play just a little bit. They're in the Carlton Reserve and they were there probably a week or two ago. But these, you know, again, I'm not dogging these folks. I just want you guys to see what they did. The water receded. They figured, OK, well, it's probably safe to go in there. Uh, I just want you to, you know, they're in flip-flops. They're wearing sandals, and they're in there in flip-flops. So we're going to let this play just for a few minutes, maybe about a minute or so. So we're going to go find the area where Brian was uh, theoretically recovered from. Um, a lot of questions still to be answered in this whole situation. But uh, we're going to show you guys the entire area. <laughs> I'm actually legitimately concerned about like gators out here because, oh my God, there's wildlife everywhere. There's definitely got to be gators out here. I feel like, babe, we should have probably brought some type of protection. What do you think? Simp, I have a knife. Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's going to do you good. I have a knife. Don't be afraid. But I love her badassness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She was like, the husband, the boyfriend or husband is like, hey, I think we should have brought protection. She's like, I got this. I got one of my, I got one of my, one of the crocodile Dundee's knives, you know, like, all right, let's just let a little bit more of this play because this is a prime example of what's, this is dangerous. You know, they got away with it and I, God bless them, but I don't want people to get a full sense of that. It's okay to just go out there. 
let's just get the job done. Okay. Um, yeah, perfect. A video we watched, there's two <laughs> sides, one called the live long side and one called the prosper side. And there is a rope swing that I am looking for that Brian had posted on Instagram before it randomly got deleted um, of him swinging with his nephew. This was all underwater at one point. What kind of car do his parents have? Isn't it a red truck? This is actually a photo that was on Twitter uh, yeah. yesterday. A photo from right here? No, it was actually from over there, but it was looking at this area right here. Onto this bridge. Apparently, someone was saying that there was um, what they would have. Told you, simp. I have another. I'm just moving it forward. Looks like a dog to me. Yeah, didn't me neither, though. But it didn't look like an alligator either. Thank God. Onward. Remember, it was only 0.9 miles of a walk in. As the crow flies. Sure, as a crow flies, that his body was found. Maybe it's 0.9 miles on trail, too. It looks pretty straight. Yeah. So, sandals, open toe. I don't know. Is that what we, is that what would you be wearing, Paul, if you were going in there? No, I'd have snake boots on. All right. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Through here. Thick. It's really thick, but apparently it's dry. It is it is thick through here. Thick. It's really thick, but apparently it's dried up a ton, so I can only imagine what it was like a month or so ago. Hmm. Well, I guess a month and a half ago. Wow. Okay, so if anybody was like me and was like super pissed at how much time they were spending looking in the Carlton Reserve, it was like, dude, he's not there. If you haven't found him, give up, move on. And then they found him here. A, that's fishy to me, but B... I guess there's a lot of stuff to look through. Okay, guys. All right, so I just want to... So we're on, on the trail now. It's thick, like I said, thick. Um, but there's a lot of debris on the ground. A lot of stuff you could stub your toes on. Am I right, babe? Babe, nobody cares about stubbing your toes right now. Come on, let's go. Okay. Uh All right. So that's... The, I, it was a good example. I, I wanted to play that. Paul, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, safe? Not safe? Uh, are they okay? Um would you recommend yeah. folks to go inside and do that? No, not in flip-flops. I know guys who go out there barefoot, but they also know the environment. They know what to look for. They know where the snakes are most likely to be. Um, I would, if I'm out there for a while, I'm going to be wearing snake boots. If they stick to the trails, that's usually on higher ground, right? So that's yeah. usually going to be not as bad. But if they want to go looking for where this guy's body was, and I don't, I don't, I'm not really familiar with the story and where it was found, but if you're going to go off trail somewhere, again, that mud could drop drop you up to your waist or your neck even. Yeah. So they were on the, they were in that exact location where they, they found him, which was off trail. It is not on a trail. Um, so, again, he talked about it being really thick there. But my concern, too, is, you know, not just alligators or, you know, like you said, snakes and things of that nature. What about wild boar? Do they run around there during the day? Are those cats that we see on these uh, trail cams that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, are they there, there during the day or are they just out at night? No, the, the cats will move around all the time. But, uh, again, that's going to be a female with cubs is going to be a sketchy situation. Um, just crawl, coming up on one you know, and surprising it is probably the most dangerous. Uh, the Florida panthers tend to be smaller than, like, the regular cougars of like Texas and whatnot. Right. So they're not as likely to attack somebody, especially two adults. Right. But, and the gators aren't going to chase anybody down and tackle anybody. It's if you fall in the water or like I said, you step on one that's buried in the mud boar. Yeah, absolutely. You get, you get too close to a boar that's kind of felt feels cornered and yeah, you could be in trouble as well, but most likely they're going to run. The yeah. biggest threat out there are the snakes, the moccasins, the rattlesnakes, and you, you've got flip-flops on. I mean, you're shuffling through some underbrush, and there's a mock there. Your, your whole week is ruined. Your whole month is ruined. And, and what's, the, what, what, what's your life expectancy if you get bit by one of these moccasins and you don't have the proper, you know, I don't know, is there an anti-venom? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you get hit by, a, by an eastern diamondback, you need to get to the hospital within like seven hours preferably two or three and uh 
you're gonna you're gonna take a lot of anti venom for that bite. Now, Moccasins as well. I mean, you mentioned uh, Chris and Gabby before. Uh, my friend Gabby, not Gabby from the story, but um, Chris is. If you ever see Chris, he's missing part of his middle finger. That's yeah. him trying to take a picture of a water moccasin and it biting him in the tip of the middle finger. And he went straight to the hospital and ended up losing the finger anyway. Yeah, Chris has got balls of steel, just as you do. Um, I, I, again, I saw him and Gabby run into that thick brush uh, along Alligator Alley and wrestle out a python out of the freaking... He went in. Like, I was watching him. I was like, no, no, no. I mean, I know he knows what he's doing. But, man, I, I would like to show it, but I'm not going to show his but, his stuff here. But that's the thing. You, he knows where he's at. And he knows what he's getting into. He knows what's in there, what's most likely in there or not. And if you just throw a python and go in there, you gotta you gotta roll the dice and hope there's no other um, you know no no venomous snakes in there when you go to grab it. I mean, we've all done that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like he went in in the dark. You you couldn't even see his. Gabby was just holding a, a cell phone and on a light, and he yeah. went in there. And this thing was he really had a fight. I mean, that that dude's in perfect shape. He's like you. He doesn't have an ounce of fat on him. And he, he went in there and he was, you could hear him. He's struggling with this goddamn thing. And then he gets him out and it was still even a struggle when he had him out. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is those pythons will wrap around trees and stuff. And you, it's, I mean, it's like a grown man's arm. I mean, you're, you're, you're putting up some, yeah, some dude. fight. He doesn't think to break away from that tree to let go of that tree or whatever he's wrapped up in. Cause you know, he's trying to secure his body so you don't take him away and eat him in his mind. Right. Yeah. So would that be out here in the middle of this thing? Ed, I'm sorry, you, you can take it right after this. Would a python be hiding somewhere in a, a thing like what we just showed with these with these folks here in this area? Yeah, would I, yeah he wouldn't necessarily be hiding, but he could be cruising along. And the python's not really going to bother you unless it's some, you know, world record size python. But, um, you know, you might see it, uh, see something in the underbrush and go to check it out and it comes up and pops you in the arm or something. But... Um, pythons aren't really the big concern. The big concerns are the, are the venomous snakes. Ed, go ahead. I'm sorry, brother. No, I mean, these, uh, these are called wildlife reserves for a reason, all right? Because there's plenty of wildlife there, and you're entering their world. You know, you're, you're invading their world, um, and you're not taking proper precautions in many cases. Like, how many cases have we seen uh, people in Yosemite or some of the other national parks see see a bear and get out and try to take a picture or see an elk just something as as majestic as an elk and try to take a picture and the next thing you know the elk is charging them down and and putting a hole in the side of their car uh, and or um, the classic case was oh i'm going to take a picture with the cell phone of this grizzly and <laughs> that was the last photograph that person ever took because the grizzly ate him yeah yeah you're up shit's creek without a paddle I have a little bit of footage of a woman in Central Florida Park. Do you know what that is, uh, Paul? No. So, yeah, Central Florida Park. I think it's on the East Coast somewhere, but I'll have to look it up. But she's in a kayak in some type of Central Florida Park Reserve or something. And she's in, in there with a kayak, and this gator comes up to her. I mean, she didn't seem like she was scared shitless, but she was just, like, poking it with her paddle let's let's play this i'll let you watch it and maybe this will be the first time you've seen this one uh i'm gonna go full screen with it no <laughs> go away <laughs> he just pokes it and oh it hisses my god at i had to push him away with my paddle <laughs> oh go away it's a big sucker Yeah, he's probably a nine footer. You push him away with my paddle. He comes right back after it. Yeah, that's ninety nine percent because somebody's been feeding him and he's just waiting for the handout. He's not he's not viewing her as a food source. Why are you he's messing? Viewing, he's viewing her as somebody that's gonna give him food. All right, so I'm gonna tell you something, Paul. I had the option and the opportunity to see this before I played it. You didn't. Watch what this woman says what you just said was a steal as well too i mean she she didn't panic she didn't like oh my god she's uh, a florida native yeah so she, she she's knew. probably a florida native she's used to it there's another guy in a kayak out there and he was like he was saying ma'am ma'am i couldn't make out what he was saying to her but 
if you feed them, they come. And uh, unfortunately, that's why you have these nuisance alligators, because people leave food in their garbage. And same thing with bears up in Pennsylvania. I have a, you know, I have a, a second home up in Pennsylvania. The bear come out if you leave the food out in, the, in a bag. They smell it. You know, you can't do it. You just got to get rid of it. You know? Yeah, you get you get fined down here if you leave your your garbage cans open where they, the bears can get it in in those areas. Right, right. Yeah. So I mean, the, the the whole concept behind me talking about this, you know, we're all curious. Human uh, human nature, you're curious. But when you're talking about indigenous wildlife and 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 things that are out there that can do you harm, it just doesn't make sense to go out there and um, poke around just just to see the site where they recovered potential, you know, parts of this guy's body in a skeletal form. It, it's in in my eyes, it's just not worth risking life and limb. And I don't know, you know, Paul. I know you're used to you know being around all of this different wildlife, but you're a trained professional. You know how to act. You know, you know, like you said, I wouldn't be wearing sandals out there, um, but that's because they're not professionals. And regular people, even if they go out there with a pair of boots on, you're wearing shorts. It's not a good go, you know? Well, the other thing is, too, I think a lot of people, and I was guilty of this when I was a kid. I came from, I lived in the woods as a kid. I was always out in the woods every day on my, either running around or on my, or my, uh, on my mountain bike or whatever on my dirt bike, whatever it was, in Maine, in Massachusetts, my buddy had a place in Maine, we were all over the woods, and I thought I knew everything, and when I came down to the, the Big Cypress Swamp, I was like, this is a different world, I don't know anything about this place, like, it's, it's just completely different, so, you know, they might come from, uh, you know, the, the, the northern, western part of the country, where you can run around in sandals all day, and it's not like that down here. Um, if you get off that trailhead and you, you could have, a, I've seen piles of moccasins, right. like 20 or 30 of them. You're kicking through the underbrush. You hit that. You're, you're in big trouble. You're not dressed appropriately. You're not wearing snake boots. You, you don't have any bear spray. Uh, you, you, you're going off the trails into, into areas that you don't know what's there. Right. Um, if you're not familiar with these locations, you shouldn't be deviating off the trail uh, and wandering around in the backwoods areas, um, you know, certain area looks dry to you, and then you step on it. The next thing you know, you're buried up to your knee in mud. Right. And, and then somebody has to pull you sometimes. out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you're stuck in the mud, you're now uh, again uh, twice twice the target because you can't get away. I was uh, telling I was telling the, um, Paul and, and Ron off camera about the time that. Uh, we had to get the fire department to rescue a person that got stuck in the mud uh, up to his uh, hip. And he had to get a, a ladder truck out there and extend the ladder out to him and run out there and grab him and suck him out of the mud because there's a suction that occurs here when Jeez. that mud gets a hold of you. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it makes you more of a target because you can't move. You're stuck in the mud for an hour and nobody can get you out. Yeah, it's an hour or more that uh, one of these critters can come by. And what are you doing? You're flailing around. You're making all kinds of noise. You become an attractive target for these uh, wild animals. Correct. Single Mama 4, thank you for that kind message. She says, and we love you, Paul, the gator guy. Uh, I don't know, Paul. If you start a YouTube channel, uh, I guess my first 100,000 subscribers that I have here, they're all coming over to you. So, um, be good. yeah, you know, if you start it up, you let me know. Uh, I'll help kick it off with you. We'll promote it here. Uh, your partner, Chris, he, I don't know, I guess he's scared of me. He doesn't want to come on. I wanted to get him on the show, but, uh, he just, he just got back from Peru. I'm sure he's been busy. So yeah, no, the dude is busy. He's all over the place. I'll get, I'll get him to come on and collaborate with me because I think he, he has, he does the feeding actually. He on his TikTok channel, uh, which is huge. He does the daily or weekly feedings on there and he does them live. He gets in he goes in the tank and uh, he goes into their area and he, he feeds them. He feeds them from the. Yeah. Today, today's feeding day. I just stopped by the park. I was trying to catch a gator behind holiday park. If somebody called about. Right. And um, yeah, all those gators are, are all those nuisance gators that would have been killed if, uh, if, if I wasn't able to get a hold of them and get them in there. Yeah. And I want to just say quickly to the folks in the chat, we appreciate you guys being here. I, I see all the questions that are coming through. At the end of um, at, at the end of this, like the last five minutes, we're going to take some questions for Paul. 
uh, and we're going to also talk quickly about our upcoming shows. But I want to show a quick uh, trail cam uh, footage. This is in the Carlton Reserves. Uh, it's at night and it's during the day and it's with the water down. Uh, so we're not going to see any alligators. But if you can, Paul, if you could see it, uh, I'll show it full screen on the screen. You can just tell uh, the audience what's, what are some of these wild, uh, what are these critters that are coming up and how dangerous are they? Will they, will they kill a human being if they come up on them? I, I know most of them you know, might get scared and go the other way, but just give us an idea of what we're looking at here if you can. All right, here we go. Looks like a little puppy. Maybe a coyote. Coyote? Yeah, it's I mean that's that's it's gonna run away from you. Raccoon? Yep. Yeah, that ain't gonna do anything. Well, if he's got rabies, he will. I've been Oh yeah. I, I've been I've been cornered by a rabid raccoon and they're nasty. Yeah, I had one jump up on its hind legs and hiss at me. All right, so this is daytime, obviously, now. It looks like a cat up here on the right. It looks like a peaceful little spot, similar to what we saw Allie and, uh, and her husband go through. Yeah, this is, it says it on my phone, so it's, like, really small to me. I can't really make out what that was. It was definitely a cat. Yeah. There goes a boar. But that's a big-ass one up there. Yeah, don't forget, Paul's looking at his phone right now. So we're looking at 27-inch monitor. Yeah, sorry. There's a deer. But it, you can see there's a lot of water here. It's muddy down here where my the where the cursor is. That will get auto to me. Yeah. Another deer. Yeah, again, I, I my my biggest concern out there would be uh oh, there's a cat. Now that, could this thing kill you? What is this? Oh. It's a bobcat. It's not gonna uh it's in the links. I, I really my phone is like this small. Um <laughs> it's again, those things aren't gonna ever come after you, but if you happen to corner it, anything, I mean, you corner an otter, you're gonna be in big trouble. Right. So I couldn't tell if that was a bobcat or, or a lynx. My phone is like really yeah, a mile away from me right now, and it's really tiny. So It had the stubby that's tail. An, yeah. That's an otter because the way he was running. Right. I'm just moving it forward because I, I didn't preview this. Oh, Father Piglets. Father the Piglets. Oh, this is a big one. Now, this, uh, this is what we're talking about that will kill you and eat you whole. Eat the bones? Not, yeah, I mean a pack of feral hogs. Yeah, they'll 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 uh, they'll devour a carcass. I would imagine. Um, but again, your your biggest concern out there is not these kind of animals. They're going to see you. You stand erect. We're very intimidating. They're they're going to run away from you. It's it's when you corner something, or you surprise like a mother and her cubs, then right. anything will protect its young. You know what I mean? All right, this is like a black cat. I want to put it back. Hold on a second. Coyotes here, hog. Okay, now these are the these are big big boars. Those are the boar. And this is at seven thirty at night. Yeah, there's a pack of them. Yeah, but again, that's after you're you're already expired. When they will come and feed on you, they're not gonna. Exactly. Hunt you down and or anything like that. It's it's really the venomous snakes and the the mud that you can get stuck in because I, I said I've sunk into it up to my chest yeah. in that mud and it's like quicksand. So yeah, but we, we're talking about these are the kind of critters that could um, take you down to your bone real quick. Yeah, yeah once you're expired, absolutely. They'll, yeah. they'll gnaw. Yeah, they'll free food is free food, man. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I, I want to reel it in because, you know, we, we don't have all day and we don't have all night. It's 36 minutes already. I promised you 30. I always suck at this. Um, but, you, you know, there, this guy has a trail cam of uh, the in the same or similar reserve, in the Carlton Reserve, with alligators going through it all night long. And I could play that, right. in, you know, I could play that, 
you know, all day and all night. I mean, nobody's going to be swimming out in those um, in those little creeks or little uh, spots of water where they're going through. It's like, you know, six or eight feet wide, and it's just water, and they go, you know, up and over the the trees that are uh, felt that have fallen across it. Right. Um, but you know, with Brian Laundry, and we're, that's what we're really talking about here. Brian Laundry went into that Carlton Reserve, uh, in my opinion, to escape capture. Uh, or perhaps to go and meet his demise um, on his own terms. It could be a, a whole host of different reasons why he went in there. But as I said on the last one with you, I feel he didn't go in there just to hang out and, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait it out in here and then I'm going to come back out. I mean, that, that's not a place where you would pick to go and try to hide out and wait out the cops, you know, uh, and some people felt like that. I mean, what's your thoughts on that, Paul? No, I mean, listen, I, I routinely will go out to the big cypress swamp or the Sakahatchee Strand with just a backpack and a water filter and disappear from civilization for five, six days. Right. Um, after five or six days, I'm ready to come back. Um, you're not going to wait the cops out, you know, weeks or months and hope this thing just goes away. You're going out there to, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, if, is there a cause of death yet on this kid? Not yet. Ed, we're waiting on that. Um, right. The body uh, is with the anthropologist, and they're waiting for the um, anthropologist to uh, generate the report. Yeah, I think he either went out there for either a couple days to try to figure out, do I need to turn myself in or what? Or he went out there, like you said, to uh, end things on his own terms. And uh, if he went out just for a couple days, it's not hard to believe that he could have got caught by – you know, get bit by a rattlesnake in the middle of the night and you don't know where you're going. You get stuck in the mud for a few hours. It's over. What about, Paul, what about eating um, some wild uh, berries and things of that nature? Is there a lot of uh, things out there? Yeah, there's, can... yeah there's, there's certain uh, things out there you don't want to eat, but you're not going to get, you know, sick to the point you're going to die. You could, he still, I'm sure, had a cell phone with him or he could have gone back to wherever, you know, the closest uh, town. If he's familiar with the area, like they said he was, he probably could have made it back if he got that sick. But yeah, I mean, if you're hiding from the cops and you don't want to get help, that's a possibility too. Might have ate something he wasn't supposed to eat. It went down after that, and then he became uh, critter food. Yeah. Like somebody said on the, on the last uh, the last video you did, like, you know, do the vultures eat the, eat the body underwater? Well, no, but the turtles and the fish and everything else does down there. So those are like the underwater vultures. Mm -hmm. The scavengers. Hey, I'm, I'm going to ask something, and Ed, you and I talked about this. Uh, Paul, any truth to that, uh, the gators? If you, let's just say Brian Laundry took some, just for argument's sake, took some medication, uh, overdosed on it, and then passed out, and then the water came up and took him into the water. Is there any truth that the gators would take a, a, a human? or any food source bring it down let it let it fester or how do we say it let it decompose uh, yeah i mean is, is that what they do yeah they'll they'll stuff it up under some roots or um you know it's you got to realize their teeth aren't made for cutting there's right. no like slicing teeth in there they're just for grabbing so for them to break apart something the size of a human they have to either grab it and go into that roll or they have to shake it violently. And when you are, you know, uh, in good health or recently expired, you're very, you know, you're rubbery, you're held together really well. You rot out in the swamp for three or four days. It's like putting something in a crock pot. You know, the meat literally falls off the bone. So it's a lot easier to break a carcass apart like that. And gators are really good at conserving energy and they can go a long time without eating. So they're in no rush. They don't mind sticking a raccoon up under the roots for a few days and eat it later where it just kind of a couple of shakes and it falls apart so it's so it's safe to say that if there was a a big feast of a human body size of brian laundry that they would want to kind of take it down let it settle for a bit you let it get soft and then just kind of go go through it or it would just if they were and you said this on last show it depends if they were really hungry some of these gators don't eat for months right yeah i mean also if there's multiple gators there's multiple gators they're not going to let somebody else have a shot at it so one will grab one end and the other one tries to steal it and they're basically working 
together, not intentionally, but it works out for them because one will roll and they'll start pulling the body apart. By yourself, you just spin that body in a circle. But if somebody, some other gator grabs one end and you grab it and you start spinning, you rip a chunk off. But again, there's so many other things, snapping turtles and, and fish and, and buzzards and coyotes. And I mean, anything will feed on a dead body. You know, a couple of my really smart, and, and you know, there's more than a couple of really smart viewers that we have here. There's almost 2,000 watching now. Um, a couple of the viewers have said to me and in, in Ed send in messages, you know, we're all confused because if they were searching for Brian Laundrie and he was deceased inside that reserve, wouldn't the buzzards be like flying around? I mean, I don't know much about it because we don't see that here in New York City. You know, the, there's a, again, the, the buzzards have to see it, though. If he's underwater and the underwater buzzards like the turtles and fish are picking him apart and it's a. You know, you got a good canopy on top. The buzzards might not even see it. Yeah. And if there is a big canopy, they're not going to be flying above it. They're going to be down underneath eating it. Right, right. Hey, I got a little bit of footage I want to play. This is in the Carlton Reserve. Uh, this is labeled the Queen of the Marsh. I'm going to play just a little bit of this. It looks like a couple of gators in a watering hole or in that same setup as I was describing to you, just maybe 10 feet wide at the max, maybe a little bit more, a little less, and a piece of water. And um, they're, they're just kind of feeding on whatever comes up. So I'm just going to play this with the audience so everyone could see this real quick, and I'll go full screen on it. This is a trail cam. Looks like a bigger one in the water, and that looks like a baby out there. Oh, oh. He doesn't eat the baby, by the way. Everyone thinks that he's eating him. He's not. What What is he doing there, Paul? What do you think? I think he was eating the baby. <laughs> no, no, the baby's still. You see the heads there. He just put okay. him. In the they, they, yeah, they will eat babies, though. Don't, don't. Uh, but this one swims. Off. This one swims. Okay. Off. Was it both gators, or was one uh, a caiman? Uh, I can't really see it. Like I said, on my phone has got a real tiny picture right now, but. They both look like gators to me. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, that, it's, it's, that shot of the gator on land is definitely a gator. That's okay. the one. That's the one that he grabs and pulls in. Yeah, he's pulling them in. You think he's eating them, but he's not. He's just, it's, he's just moving them, and then he lets them go. Yeah, I don't know. That's no. That's that's a that's indecisiveness. He, he'll eat that thing in two seconds. It might. I mean, I don't know. It might have been a mother who got flashbacks of bringing her bringing her babies to the water's edge after uh, they hatched out of a nest. But that's not just, I'm doing you a favor. That's I'm thinking about eating this thing and decided not to. Right. And he's just staring them down. Um, but uh, from what my memory serves me correct, this thing swims off. Just let the little yeah. one swims off. Yeah. He might not have killed it, but he yeah. definitely uh, might've just been uh, teaching it a lesson. Like, Hey, this is my area. Get the heck out of here. And this is this is the size of that thing that was in there. What, what what are we looking at here? Can you see that at all with your phone? Yeah, uh, barely. It looks like a looks like a seven, maybe an eight footer. That's it. Not real big. Oh my god! Look is this a, tra a trail camera or is that a person on this camera? It's a trail cam. Oh okay. That thing looks bigger than se seven feet. Yeah, it's, it doesn't look. I don't know. Could be could be eight. Could be nine. It's hard to tell. Like I said, I'm looking at a. I'm looking at a, uh, something the size of a half a playing card. Can you can you uh, tell the sex? No, nah, you got to poke your finger inside. Unfortunately, um, if it's really big, it's probably a male. Um, I've never seen a female. I've seen one female bigger than ten feet, but most of the females tend to top out around six, seven feet. All all I know is I would never mess with that thing. I mean, listen, if you got called to someone's home and this was in the back and. Uh, in the little, uh, what do they call those little, um, little, little man-made bodies of water behind the Florida homes? What do they call those? Uh, just like a little lake, a man-made lake, or whatever. You... Yeah, canals, ponds, little. You, you, I mean, there's you're koi just, ponds, everything. You're just going at that thing, no fear. You just, you know what you got to do. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're. Again, if you know the animal, know what his limitations are. He's got, he's got limited movement. He's lightning fast, but he can only move a certain way and. He can do things that he doesn't really – he doesn't know if he did them, I would be toast. Right, it's right. like he doesn't think – if he just charged me at certain points, I would have no shot. But that's not what they're doing. Again, we stand erect. 
we tower above them. We're like Bigfoot, so we're rather intimidating to these right. guys. And, and like like we played in the last video that we got that little copyright strike on, um, that alligator did a beeline and and swam towards you like you were you know you were his going to be his next dinner. Um, yeah, I, for sure. I, and again, I think I said this last time. You're this deep in the water. You're a duck. What's below the duck? Nothing. He doesn't know any better. All he sees is your head. Right. I've been grabbed by a, I've been, I don't know if you can see, but I've been grabbed by a, uh, about an eight foot alligator, thought my head was a duck. And by the grace of God, I got my shoulder up at the last minute. He grabbed my shoulder. Let me see and, that. Uh, full screen. Holy shit. I don't know if you can wow. see. It's yeah, not real see. bad, but it's right yeah. here. Yep. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I got my shoulder up at the last minute and uh, he started shaking the crap out of me. He got a couple of elbows to the throat and he was like, it's a big duck. And he took off. <laughs> Had it been 10, 11 feet, you know, I might not be here right now. I might be chasing an alligator down, trying to get my arm back. But, well, um, yeah, they're in the, in, in the water, they're much more likely to see you as prey. Even that video you saw where I noosed the one underwater. Yeah. If, if he saw me coming, he can see how big I am. He's not looking at me as a, as a prey item. He's looking to either – I've had him come at me underwater, but that's to chase me away, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um. On land, again, we're very intimidating. We, we, we tower above them. We're, I've had 16-foot crocodiles run away from me in Australia because on land, it's just not their element, and you, you look a lot bigger to them. Right. Get near the edge of the water or in the water, you're, you're in trouble. But again, I, I've seen Chris do the feeding, and when there's multiple gators in that enclosure or whatever you guys call it where they're in right. the water. Gator pit. Right. So in the gator pits, I've watched a few with Chris, and he's towering over them. And granted, he's holding a bucket of chicken, so he's got food. But they're aggressive. Well, they're, he's got that stick. But like, I'm yeah, like, but there's fist clenched. That's totally, but, totally different from a wild alligator. Wild alligator sees you as a as as a predator. Those guys, I mean, we lay we lay around with those gators like they're like they're you know a cushion from a couch. Right. They, they don't see us as anything threatening. We're not anything bad to them. We're only good. We're either the guy that hangs out and doesn't do anything or we're the guy that throws them some food. So yeah, that aggression you see is towards the food. I want to get that food before Godzilla gets it. Godzilla wants to get it before Hector gets it. And Hector wants to get it before Mr. Fahrenheit gets it. It's all, right. it's all just a competition. They're not looking at us as a food source. But if you don't have the food, they might mistake your hands. They're not Godzilla yeah. especially. God bless him. He's my baby boy. But – He's not that bright. <laughs> what uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, and I, you know, if you don't want to answer, sure. you don't have to. Um, what do you think the odds are of uh, Brian Laundry being consumed by gators in the Calton Reserve? I mean, there, it's loaded with gators. I mean, I, mean, I, I saw some figures. There's thousands of them in there. Um, what would you say on a scale of one to ten? You know, ten being the most. What, what do you think? Uh, I, what do they find for remains on them? Just a piece of his skull and some uh, bone wow. bones. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's possible. I mean I don't I have one to ten, maybe a three or a four. But throw in all the other animals, hogs, bear, anything else is a, it will scavenge uh, food. If if he's dead out there, I mean it, it it's it's pretty pretty close to a nine or a ten. It's not gonna it's not gonna go to waste out there. Right. Nature doesn't do that very much. And, you know, people argue, and, and Ed, you know about this. People will say to us, oh, did he shoot himself? Did he hang himself? Did he take pills? I mean, listen, if he was to, sh if, if let's just say for argument's sake, he did shoot himself. He Say he shot himself in the head or he shot himself and there's blood splatter all over. That's going to make the process go quicker. It's going to send the critters over a little bit quicker than if he took some pills or, um, you know, whatever and laid down. And then it takes a little while, right? Ed, you're yeah. a crime scene expert. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, first the insects will come because they'll smell that right away. They'll smell the death right away, the blood, and um, the decomp starts right away. The bacteria start working. Um, then the rest of the animals show up, the, the rest of the scavengers. Let's see, as Paul said, hey, it's a free meal. Here I come. I didn't have to catch it. It's dead. It's right here. And I'm <laughs> going to take advantage of it. Um, 
and it can becomes the 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 fight of the fit fitter you know like whoever can get to like when we watch birds feed on uh you know like wild birds i see them feeding in in central park you know the bigger one always gets the pigeon the bigger pigeon always gets every all the smaller ones away and he mm -hmm. takes whatever he wants so i'm sure that's how it is out there too there's well, a question the gator... yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was say the gator the gators are like that too as far as smelling death i had a gator that was hit by a car and I brought it back to the park, and I was getting uh, a pen open for it, and I just kept it in the gator pit. And I thought for sure it was going to die anyway. I called my vet. We are trying to get something set up. And when I got back to the pit, the gator had died. And, it, I mean, it died within, like, three minutes. Godzilla – and Godzilla will – I can pet him in the – you've seen me brushing his teeth on that, on that video on my Instagram page. Godzilla went over and tried to tear him in half and eat him. He, like, he knew he was dead within – within 30 seconds. And he literally came out of the pit, walked 20 feet over and started trying to shred them. And I was like, right. Let the death rest for a second, dude. So. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people in the chat feel the Gators didn't need them. And you know what? You gave me a three or a four. So the possibility is, you know, again, anything's possible. Nobody knows. We don't know, but you know, I asked you up and down the last time you, uh, you were on with us. What do these gators eat? And you said they eat everything and anything. Uh, they'll eat a boot. They'll eat a shoe. They'll eat a backpack. So people ask, why is that dry bag there? Why did the dry bag last and um, nothing of his, no clothing, there was nothing, no shoes, no nothing recovered, his dry, his dry bag with a, a notebook in it, and, um, and, and that's it, you know, so... I don't know. Well, dry dry bags rubber, so that's that's the last thing you're going to eat, just because it doesn't doesn't hold that human scent like clothes do. Clothes will still smell like a sweaty guy, which smells like food to them. You know what I mean? It's a it's a it's bo animals reek of, of of body odor. It's just you know it's a natural smell, and they'll eat that stuff. But rubber doesn't do that stuff. It's it uh, one rain, and that stuff's pretty much gone. So well, it also I, doesn't feel like doesn't feel like flesh. A right. wet shirt will feel like flesh. A wet boot feels like, you know, some kind of a, of an animal part. But uh, yeah, like I said, a three or four with the gators eating them, just because there's so many other animals. I'm not saying more than likely he got consumed by by a bunch of animals. Right. Yeah. Well, the definitive answer is going to come from the anthropologist because the critters are going to leave their teeth marked uh, on their bones, and they'll be able to tell what critters were nibbling at them. Um, you know, and that's that's you know what's time consuming about the analysis, right? They'll have to look at all of these things under the microscope and check out the depth and uh, of each of these um, marks on the bones and determine uh, what critter created them. Right. Hey, I wanted to ask you, Paul, about the dry bag. I don't know shit about these dry bags. Um, what, what's a typical dry bag? Like, is it going to, if it, if the water comes up two or three feet and it's a dry bag, is in that water? Is it going to, is the water going to get in there or is it some, no, is, is it like a, no, it's, just like a big a big sack it's you usually have they have a roll down and right fold it over and that that fold three or four rolls with it it's watertight you use them as flotation devices all the time if you get across a swamp and it's you know deep in your chest you get all your stuff in it you can kind of use that as a flotation device to kind of like breaststroke your way through and so no, uh no water can get in a dry bag not if, yeah not if it's if it's a good dry bag no Okay. Right. If it's sealed closed correctly and there's no holes in it, um, apparently that dry bag um, right. had a hole had a hole in it. Um, when um, when uh, Brian's parents were holding it, it, there seemed to be something protruding from the bottom corner of it. Okay. What what would be the purpose of him bringing a dry bag in there? Because obviously, I guess he knew that the water does come up. He knows that's a familiar. His parents said that's a familiar place where he goes. So yeah, with, I least, mean it's it's, it's Southern Florida. It rains every day. <laughs> at so certain times of the year, it's going to rain every day. So I I have a dry bag with me at all times. If I'm going to go out into the swamp and I'm going to bring like camera equipment to film something or you know uh, um, right. just clothes and stuff, you always bring at least a small dry bag in your backpack. If you don't bring an actual dry bag backpack, gotcha. And he had a notebook a diary, maybe a sketch pad, uh, things that he would want to protect from getting wet. Nice. Yeah, that's normal to have a dry bag like that. Then. 
let me turn over to the chat and say thank you to my Facebook people, the Facebook uh, live streamers. We have Twitch. We're live streaming on Twitch, Facebook, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six Facebook groups, and also Twitter Live and YouTube. So I want to say thank you to everybody who has joined. And we're not wrapping yet because I got a, a quick Q and A with Paul. Um, I want to just say thank you to the live chatters. Over two thousand folks at one point here. Uh, Facebook, Twitter Live, uh, Twitch, and all of the groups on Facebook, the Police and Crime Chat Group. You guys are all awesome. Uh, and if you haven't uh, authenticated yourself on um, through Streamlabs on Facebook, that's the reason why I can't see your name because it just comes up as Facebook user. So thank you to everyone who's in on all of those groups. Uh, quickly, I'd like to just say um, hello to everybody outside the country. If you're watching outside the country let me know where you're watching your city state or your country and would like to say hello to you quickly uh we are going to be doing a show on thursday with a um a bug doctor ed you want to take that and tell everybody about ian okay so we have ian from down under he's a doctor of entomology he uh works at the body farm as well and at ut uh with dr murray marks uh he trains the fbi agents up He's been doing it for the last 13 years, and he's graciously uh, agreed to join us on Thursday night, 8 p.m. New York time, um, to go over all things entomology and decomp. So he'll talk about uh, the insects, when they, what insects get there first, so forth. We'll lead him through a series of questions, just like we uh, did with our anthropologist, Dr. Murray Marks, and we'll have all your answers, question, your questions answered, rather. Awesome. Thank you, Ed. That's going to be a show that you're not going to want to miss. Thursday night, um, 8 p.m., Ed, or 9? Did we say 8? 8 p.m., 8 p.m., because yeah. it's going to be 8 a.m. in Perth. Friday in yeah. Perth. So uh, some folks checking in from Scotland. I saw two from Scotland. I see um, Switzerland checking in. UK, uh, thank you for all my folks across the pond joining. Uh, who else is here? Let's see. I saw something really cool. Oh, Norway. Greetings oh, from Norway and Sydney, Australia. Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. There we go. Checking in. Brazil is here. Everybody's joining because of Paul, the gator guy. They love Paul because he is bringing great content to uh, folks for you know, this wildlife. We, we could sit here and I would look like fools talking about this. So Without Paul, uh, we really wouldn't be, we wouldn't have a show for you tonight. So <laughs> thank you, Paul. Um, let me just cherry pick a couple of questions coming in. And, you know, uh, everybody loves this whole thing. They're fascinated with that. You rescue these alligators. How much does it cost to house one of these guys? Fortunately, not that much. They only eat once a week, usually two or three pieces of chicken. Uh, the sanctuary down in Homestead that I work with, they get their food, basically like expired meat from Walmart, like a super supermarket, right. uh, super Walmart, whatever. Right. So the hard part is those guys and me sometimes picking through all those bags, getting the, the chicken out. And like we said before, they kind of prefer it to be a little bit rotten anyway. So, right, right. Um, so but, it, uh, what would you say like uh, on an average for you? each guy for a year does it cost 500 bucks does it cost a thousand dollars no it's probably less than that um okay. i mean we've got we've got 15 i think 15 gators in the main pit right now for the show gators we use right. there's a thousand of them over a thousand down at the uh at the sanctuary but um like i said a lot of that food's free it's overflow from walmart or whatever and if we run out you go out and you buy you know right. some uh 40 pound boxes. It's, it's, don't get me wrong. It's, it's not cheap, but, uh, it's not as bad as, it's not like you're feeding a thousand tigers for it that way. I got you. Yeah. That's a question that comes in quite a bit. It's very redundant and I don't have the answers. I never was able to answer it. So I said, all right, let me get them and ask them that. Um, and like it's, some years, some years are different. You may have not have to pay for anything one year because Walmart's got tons of expired meat. And then other times, like right now, they're not they're not thrown out as much. So now we're going out and having to buy some stuff. So here's a question for you, Paul. Um, one of the audience wants to know if gators smell blood in the water. Not in the water. They'll smell it in the air. They'll smell uh, rotten meat in particular. But I've I've bled around gators all the time, and they've never like, you know, all of a sudden started acting different towards me. 
Um, if you were to let it fester all over you and it starts to, you know, you get too much of it, I'm sure. But if you can smell it, they can smell it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not like a shark. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. People are thinking, oh, if you put blood in the water and they'll come like crazy. Now, I've, I've been, I've, I've literally been covered in blood working with the gators all day and yeah. they know enough to leave me alone. All right. Uh, Amelia says, do alligators spit out bones if they ate a human? No, they would digest those pretty, pretty, uh, pretty completely. And that's probably one of the reasons why the, you maybe gave a lower grade on the possibility of a gator because they would probably have consumed all of him um, in a feeding. So, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, if it's in that kind of a swampy area, there they could be some bits and pieces that make it, you know, that you, they didn't pick up. Or if it's only a one or two, a human's a good-sized meal. Right, right. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they didn't eat three quarters of it and then the little scavengers came over and finished it off. I mean, you don't. It's right. not going to go to waste. That's that's my big thing. It's something is going to eat a, a dead body out there. Yeah. It's not like the desert where if nobody sees it, it just kind of mummifies. It's yeah. going to get consumed by something. So Smee says, "How do they poop out the bones?" I'm going to imagine they break it down in their digestive tract and then it comes. Yeah, out. there's nothing to poop out. The only thing I've ever seen them really regurgitate. I have a gator named McLovin, and uh, I caught him at a park. He was actually running through the parking lot. I've been chasing him for like a month. I couldn't get next to him in the water, but he was, I was on my mountain bike and I had to jump off the mountain bike and tackle him in a, in a parking lot. Cause I wasn't going to let him get away. I've been chasing him for so long, <laughs> but like two weeks after we put him in the gator pit, we thought he had COVID. He started coughing and I was like, Oh, he's got the COVID. And he, he puked up 32 operculums, which are the little trap door in the back of an apple snail right. or any snail, obviously. Yeah. But, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those things. It almost looks like a pearl or something. There's like a, a metallic. They can't digest that apparently for some reason. They'll digest the shell. They'll digest bones. But wow. those are perculum. And he just spit up 32 of them. And I guess it's better to come out of a hole this big than crap out 32 razor blades out the back door. So I guess that was the, the mm-hmm. reason they came up through his throat. Here's, here's Amelia coming back in with a question. And then this just goes to show you Dog the Bounty Hunter is not an expert when it comes to alligators. Um, <laughs> she says, this is her follow-up question to you. Dwayne, <laughs> the dog, said that he read somewhere that alligators spit up bones. But we know that that's not true. They consume them and... Um, They'll they, digest them, yeah. Everything goes. Everything goes. So, And the clothes, too, because people keep saying, what about the clothes? What about the clothes? I know you've answered it several times. They'll eat everything. Right. I, I've literally had Godzilla, my baby boy again. Um, somebody threw like three tennis balls in a gator pit one day. And I was able to, to uh, tackle him after he ate them. And I put a PVC pipe in his mouth, reached into his stomach, and pulled uh, one or two of them. I think I got one of them out. And I couldn't get the other one out. I tried to flood him. And he actually, it was a four-inch PVC uh, coupling. I put it in his mouth, and he squashed it. You could put your car on that thing. It's not going to break. He flattened it. But I put another one in his mouth, and I figured he can't do it twice, and reached my hand into his stomach, pulled out one of the, the tennis balls. I couldn't get the other two out. And I figured, hey, it's rubber. He'll either puke it up or it'll digest. And a week later, there was like, yellow thread in one of his poop. So he digested a rubber tennis ball and most of the string. It's just some of it didn't didn't totally get broken down. Hey, Paul, do I have permission to show your uh, Instagram for the folks? I want to promote it a yeah. little. Okay. Yeah, so, whatever you want. Um, so this is Paul's Instagram account. Uh, I encourage you guys to go over there and, and this is it, right? Uh, Gator Boys yep. Alligator. Yeah, Gator Boys Alligator Rescue, yep. Uh, I'll go full screen, but they could still hear you talking. Hold on, let me get this full. Um, there he is. Uh, what's your latest latest post? Have you posted lately? Or are you active on this? Nah, it's been a while. I'm going to start posting, uh, in like two weeks. I've been busy with all the nonsense. Look at this handsome devil. Uh, that looks like a baby over your shoulders, huh? Yeah. He's probably like eight feet. I'm trying to think where that is. I think that was in, uh, yeah, I think that was in sunrise. It says you were called out for a 10 foot gator that I've been chasing for about four months now. They also added a second gator to permit 
So this was the, the yeah. That's that's. I was just there today looking for that ten footer. Still, wow. That gate has been over there for over a year. He takes off and he comes back like six months later. Yeah, this post, drive me crazy. This post was fifty three weeks ago. So yeah. All right, that's a really clear one right there. Um, that's this, just jigsaw. Jigsaw. Wow. Yeah, he's got a little little. Let's say he's got a little piece of a jigsaw missing from his head. He's got like a fight with another gator. Or somebody took a little divot out of his face, but. He's a good boy. He's a sweetheart. Wow. That's a baby. Yeah, it's like six and a half. That's somebody's yard right there. That's Florida. What? That's, that, but behind me is, a, is just somebody's yard. Right. That's a, that's a nine footer with nine and a half footer. And my cameraman trying not to get eaten right now. You got a great angle there. That's for sure. Oh, what do we got here? What is this? It's one of the pythons. And it looks like the same type of road where I saw Chris and Gabby. Um, yeah, that's how we catch most of them. It's these levees that run all through the Everglades. Um, you just ride the levees, depending on what time of year. When it's warm, you go at night. And when it's cold, you go in the day because the water starts to cool off and they want to lay up and bask. So right now, I'm starting to do these long runs out through the Everglades. And I bring a backpack and a snake bag looking for snakes. Now, these snakes are not indigenous to the Everglades, right? These were people's pets, and they let them loose in the wild, and they – yes or no? Yeah, that's part of it, but there was also a breeding facility down in Homestead that I believe it was Hurricane Andrew that just uh, demolished it, and a bunch of pythons got loose along with released pets, and now they're breeding, and there's supposedly up to 300,000 out there now. Right, and they're just ruining the ecosystem. Yeah, like I said, there's a 94% reduction. Last time I heard, 94% uh, reduction in mammals in the national park right now. What are you doing here? What's happening here? You're giving kisses? Yeah, I bought them dinner and told them I love them, though. It's not just, I'm not just a random gator kisser. You're not just a one night stand, is what that's what you No, saying? no. I said, yeah, we're. Uh, All right. I don't, I don't know who that is. I didn't keep that gator apparently because I would I would have known who that was. You're you're in it for the long haul. Uh, another that might have been I, that might have been a one night stand because I don't know who that is. <laughs> I knew you were a slut. All right, here we that go. That might have been that might have been one and done. That's my boy. That's Godzilla. Godzilla. Wow. That's and again, cool. he's a sweetheart, but when it comes time for food, you just can't trust him. He's like, is that food in your hand? I'll need bite first and ask questions later. He looks a lot older than 50 years old. He, this thing looks like he's uh, ancient, like 100 years old. Yeah, he used to babysit Joe Biden's grandmother. Oh. oh. Whoa. So <laughs> he That's actually cool. walked with dinosaurs. He's old. Yeah, he is old. He, oh, we saw this. the octagator. Yeah, yeah we saw that. the octagator. Look we'll, at that boy. We'll show this to the audience. Come on, octagator. Come on. He's another one. Once you can, he's. Not bad when there's no food, but once once he sees food, all bets are off. Around him. Or over him, whatever works. It's coming quick. Octagator, come. Yeah, he just ran over like three gators trying to get there. Come on, Octagator. Yeah, I see the two there heads. He come on, Octo. Hi, Bubba. Come on, Octo. Come on. Octagator, come. Good boys. Good boys. Good boys. Whoa. Good boys. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it looked like it, something went wrong there. <laughs> no, I just backed up into the fence and I couldn't get the food out of the bag quick enough. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, so everybody go over to uh, Gator Boys Alligator Rescue on uh, Instagram. How can people support you? There's, uh, is there any type of... Um, How you doing, my boy? Do you, do you have like any type of nonprofit or is it... This is... Now, I, I, I know two people who have done the nonprofit thing, and the, the paperwork is astronomical. Like, I can't even do my own taxes, never mind handling that stuff. So I just do it out of my pocket right now. But I've got a, a GoFundMe thing. I've just never advertised it. All right, yeah, because people have asked me, you know, not tons, but a, lot, a, a good enough amount of people have asked me, how do, I, how do we support um, his work? So I will have to get that GoFundMe from you. Uh, so I could post that if you don't mind, because okay, uh, yeah, you know, that's cool. Even if somebody wants, oh, like I said, I've, I've I've literally never advertised it. Like I set it up like months ago, and I just kind of right. was hoping to get the YouTube channel up and then promote it along with it. But I some real life stuff came up, and I had to, uh, to yeah, hold no, off I, on that. I, I get you, brother. Um, so this is is this the rescue? Um, 
what we're looking at here inside this. That's enclosure. that's Holiday Park. That's where Chris does the feeding. That's where we do the. the we call it wrestling. There's no wrestling anymore. These guys are like puppy dogs. It's right. Just an alligator presentation. But that's Snoopy. He's a. <laughs> Who's narrating this? That's me. Like where you walk, girl. Come on. <laughs> that must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. <laughs> what do we got here? Debo. What do you want to shout the title? That hissing. Is, what is that? Is that like a love? love? I brought you in this kit, and I'll take you out. What is, what is he doing there with the hissing? He's just... It's breeding season at that time. He's trying to intimidate me, but it's not working. Yeah, it sounds like a fart. Boop. Wow. That's how you beat an alligator. Just boop, right in the nose. Works right. every time. Wow. Marta, come no, it right. doesn't. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Unless you have a gator at your house, then you probably know what you're doing. Okay. All right. I think we showed enough for this... Uh... Instagram page. I think we all got the got the idea. Uh, Paul has got balls of steel. I always say that. Um, on behalf of Duty Ron and Prime Time with Duty Ron, I'm going to make a $250 donation to the GoFundMe uh, for the work that you do. So I'm going to get that from you. That. Yeah, I'm going to get that from you when we're done with this, which we're going to wrap it up now. Listen, guys, uh, the reason we do these things is to educate. And um, I can't overemphasize the importance of safety. Uh, going out and gawking at a location where um, remains were, were taken uh, were taken into custody by FBI and Northport Police Department, no matter what you think of how they did this job. Now, we all know that this is not a great, um, this, this is not their best hour for the Northport Police Department, but we're not here to bash them. We're here to just say, if there is evidence that's left behind and we're in there kicking stuff around, it's not a great thing uh, for helping the Petito and Schmidt family. So I say this, uh, as a retired police professional, Ed concurs, I know, with me, let that stuff stay there and let the police uh, handle it, whether it's the FBI, uh, local, the state, or the park police, let them handle it. We don't need to go in there and try to do their jobs for them. Uh, again, the folks who, who, who did find the bottle, the water bottle, Kudos to them. They did the right thing. But, you know, we don't want kids going in there and throwing things around and picking up evidence. And, oh, look, I found a bone, Dad. Look at this. We don't want that. Um, so th that's my takeaway from it. But from a safety perspective, the reason I brought Paul on is to, in, in, you know, give you guys um, his professional opinion on the wildlife that's out there. And Ed and I, we can hunt down criminals left and right. Ed can, you know, collect forensic evidence and do all of his crime scene stuff and bring us some of the best guests that crime time with duty Ron has ever seen uh i i'm proud to toot my own horn that i connected with paul um, ed had nothing to do with that <laughs> <laughs> so i take credit for i take credit for hooking up with paul 100 percent, folks 100 percent. but i i do want to say that you know um from crime time with duty ron from my all of my subscribers it's not coming out of my pocket it's coming from the channel that donation is uh acknowledgement of the great work that you do for the uh, residents in in south florida on the east coast and west coast you're all over the place so um it's my pleasure and honor to do that for you and promote your youtube channel when it gets going um you can definitely count on me i know you can count on chris he's got a great following him and gabby will help you out and um i'll give you the push from the police side on this end so I appreciate it. Will you come back and uh, join us an, another time? Soon? Anytime you want. If I'm free, you got it. Excellent. Uh, anybody have any uh, last questions? Because we're going to wrap it up. Ed, you got something for the troops? No. Just remember Thursday, 8 o'clock, New York time. It's all bugs. Bugs, bugs, and all bugs. We're going to have the doctor on. Mm -hmm. Guys, I want to just say a special thank you to everybody who positively interacted here. And as I like to end all of these live streams, I like to say God bless the world, God bless the United States of America, and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat. And all victims of crime and their families across the globe, may they have peace and find strength from folks like us here in this type, type of crime community, giving them support, and praying for them, guys. Thank you so much from New York, Florida, and Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Paul.